A few weeks ago I made a video on merchanting for the invention skill. If you haven't seen it yet before watching this one, then I highly suggest you to do so first. It turned out surprisingly popular. In that video I said that I would make a second part if anything major was changed or announced. And this week Jax did an invention podcast, and as a result a lot of people started asking me questions about it. I'll answer them for you in this video. Hey guys, it's the Vine from Roach.com. In the first video I said that Invention was planned for January but could become February due to its complexity. It is still planned for January 25th, but it will unfortunately be incomplete. A Jmod said that items that degrade to dust won't be augmentable upon release, which basically means the level 90 armors, tectonic, sirenic and malevolent, as well as PvP items and tradable ports armor. We also know that defenders won't be included yet. You will still be able to disassemble all of those items and use their components to create perks, you just won't be able to augment these items themselves yet, that will come later. Now the reason why this has me concerned is because Jax apparently didn't figure out how to make it work for these items yet, which makes me wonder what else won't be included upon release and how badly this update was rushed. I'm really sorry for anyone who invested in any of these items as it's now kind of getting screwed over, I hope they will add them soon. Either way, that's the only truly new thing that I saw, which wasn't even in the podcast. Everything that was mentioned in the podcast itself is just a more detailed explanation of what we already knew. But I'll break it down for you anyways to really help you understand what is coming. We knew you would be able to level up augmented items, that was already told to us many times. After the podcast, we know that this leveling up goes up to level 10, which changes nothing for merchanting. For disassembling augmented items, we already knew there will be two options. Option 1 is to get more XP by disassembling the augmented item and basically losing it in return for components. Option 2 is to get less XP by taking off the perks and losing the components in return for keeping the main item. Now we know that if you choose option 1 there will be additional advantages other than more XP. First off, the rate at which you use up divination energy when you train with an augmented weapon like that in the future will probably decrease. So if you break down a level 10 augmented versus wand, and normally seen it would cost you 200 kgp per hour in divination energy in this case to train with it, this could decrease to 150k per hour for example, once you start training with your second versus wand. Now it could then be 100 kgp for the third one for example, so it keeps on going like that. So as you progress in the skill, you will need less energy or cash or whatever it is that will fuel it, if the jmod explained it well. Now this is an incentive to break items down. If the original item would cost you 200k per hour to train with, but after breaking it down this becomes 150k per hour for example, you would save 50k cash per hour. Now while this seems like very little, it does add up over time. If you would use the item for 500 hours, it would save you 25 mil GP in total, which is quite a bit. Now of course I'm just making up numbers here and re in reality the rates will probably be balanced pretty well, but it's just to explain you the mechanism behind it which encourages you to really break down those expensive weapons as well. Now the second advantage of option 1 to disassemble an augmented item is that you will also get 4 times the components from the main item than you would have if it was a normal item. So if you disassemble a level 10 augmented Virtus Wand, you get 4 times more components from it than you would from a regular Virtus Wand. You do still lose all of the components you originally added to it though, even if those were from level 90 weapons for example. So why the hell would anyone be doing this? Disassembling such valuable items for XP is extremely expensive. Despite what a lot of people insisted on thinking, this skill isn't going to be cheap if you want decent XP rates, and it's going to be really expensive in the billions if you want the very best weapons and armor with the very best perks. Of course, if invention was this expensive to train, people all over the game would whine and scream at Jagex that they cannot possibly expect them to be able to afford to train like this, even though they all go for 200 mil XP in so many skills and have all of these items in their bank collecting dust, they will still complain about this and they will tell Jagex that it just wants to make money off bonds. I think the most important thing for people to realize here is that while they spend money breaking down expensive items, so does everyone else which means that the drops you will get from PVM will become more valuable over time. This compensates for the heavy cost of train invention as you can more easily make the money back. 
Unfortunately, the average RuneScape player is probably not intelligent enough to understand that, so they will indeed whine and scream. So Jagex came up with an alternative way to train invention, which is option 2 I referred to earlier. Instead of disassembling the level 10 augmented item and losing it, you can instead siphon it, which will let you keep the main item, but you lose the components that you added to it. Additionally, you will get the XP you would have gotten from disassembling that augmented item at two levels lower. So in this case, if you would have disassembled the item at level 8. Now the example that was given in the podcast was level 10 giving 300k XP and level 8 150k XP, so half of that. So just like with training your skill, the XP curve is exponential. Now keep in mind that this does not mean you will get 300k XP from disassembling just about any level 10 item. It completely depends on what the augmented item itself is, but also how good the perks on it are that you made with your components. You're not going to get a lot of XP from combining some cheap shit and training it to level 10. So while it's possible to train the skill in a very cheap way by adding common components to your items, it will also be very slow. This leaves it completely up to the player how much money they want to spend on it, just like you can get 99 prayer with rune dragon bones or just with big bones. Ultimately, this simply results in one's valuable drops becoming more valuable again, which is precisely what the skill wants to achieve. So if it works out, Jagex completely nailed it. Of course, as I already said, the skill is unfinished. Other than a bunch of items not being included yet, Jagex also plans to add and change perks and materials based on player feedback. We have to understand that this is incredibly difficult for them to balance well, because it affects the entire game. So there will be a lot of messy, messy things in the beginning. Jagex will be adding more stuff as well based on the updates throughout the year as they mentioned, so when God Wars Dungeon 2 comes out, we will likely be able to augment whatever drops we can get from there as well. Now I've seen a few concerns that I would still like to answer. You can ask any questions I don't cover in the comments below. First off, some people seem to think that everyone will only focus on weapons and won't disassemble anything else. Now this is not true. You will need components from all kinds of items to create the best perks. Otherwise most of the skill would be dead content straight away upon release, which is not what they want to achieve with this. There will definitely be more people who focus on trying to get offensive perks to get more DPS, which might make them more expensive to get, but this also means other perks will be cheaper and thus more people will resort to them to save money. Secondly, I've already answered the concern of the skill being too expensive to train. Now this simply isn't true. Only if you want the very best XP rates and items it's going to be really expensive. The only thing that is different about this skill is that if you really want the very best, it's going to cost you far more than any other skill would. If you get 99 prayer with slow XP rates, you're still going to get all of the useful prayers from it. If you only train invention with shitty com common components, you will never get the best items in game. Just like you will never get overloads if you only make prayer potions. Thirdly, the concern that nobody will disassemble expensive items and everyone will stick with cheap ones. Think about this one for a second. If everyone uses cheaper level 70 items, those become so expensive, up to the point where it is better GP per XP to use the more expensive level 80 or 90 weapons. This is simply going to level out. Additionally, there are tens of thousands of players who are currently maxed. Many of them are going to try to get 99 invention as fast as they can. Especially the thousands of players racing to be the first to 99 invention and to 200 mil XP. I would really not worry too much that your items won't be used for a while, they will all end up getting their turn. You will see a lot of people buying and selling out of uncertainty, which is all potential profit that you can make, so enjoy the ride and keep your head with it. That's it for Invention Merchanting, I wish you guys all the best with your investments, this is seriously going to be so crazy, so have fun and good luck. I look forward to all the great uploads on the merch logs for it. So thank you for watching, I may not be able to make a video for the next two weeks depending on how things turn out for me, but after that I'll be back with the February BTS Merchant Review and the Inactive Flipping Guide. Take care and I'll see you then.